Well, it's Christmas time, and, and on TV, we always have the uh, Charlie Brown Christmas specials. Of course, they were on awful early this year, but I think they're going to repeat them sometime around Christmas. And in the, in the, one of the scenes, Lucy comes to Charlie Brown, and she says to Charlie, she says, Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown. Tis the season of goodwill and peace on earth toward man. And she says, therefore, I, I suggest that we all forget our differences and love one another. And of course, Charlie Brown's face lights up because Lucy is never really nice to Charlie Brown. And Charlie Brown lights up and he has a, a smile. He says, that's wonderful, Lucy. I'm so glad you said that. But tell me, do we only have to love each other at this time, this season of the year? Why can't we love each other all year long? And Lucy frowns and says, what are you, some kind of a fanatic or something? Well, I think there's about three basic groups of people who celebrate or don't celebrate Christmas. ABC TV has the, uh, the, the great Christmas tree, the great Christmas light fight, which turns Christmas lights and decorating into a TV show. And the displays are judged in three categories, the use of lights, the overall design, and Christmas spirit. And, and with this light show, I mean, some of these people need their own transformer station for some of these, these uh, displays. But these people go all out. They, they try to do, outdo their neighbors. They, they try to outdo what they did last year with their Christmas lights and decorations. And it's Christmas lights, and it's supposed to be all about Christmas. But to be honest, showmanship is not what Christmas is all about. And then, of course, after this comes on the, uh, the holiday bake show with, with elaborate baking items. And I, I don't know how people have time to bake some of this, this multi-layer, multi-decorated stuff that, that ends up on the show. And so it becomes more about the, so, the showmanship, not what Christmas is supposed to be about. The very first Christmas was just a very simple affair. And I think that's how Jesus would have us continue to celebrate it. Well, the next group that's out there is the, the Bah Humbugs. And, and they just really tolerate barely it's getting worse each year. Just barely tolerate Christmas, and they would be glad to see it go away. Ebenezer Scrooge best represents this group. There's also those that, that uh, want politically correct stores, that want politically correct businesses at this time. They, they celebrate Christmas, they want the money, they want your business, but 
The signs don't say Merry Christmas. They say Happy Holidays, or the employees will say Happy Holidays, or, or Happy Hanukkah, or perhaps even Happy Kwanzaa. And then there is the group that celebrates Christmas because of the religious importance. It should be because Christmas points to a God who loves us very much. But the problem is, if we get really serious about Christmas, and excluding the, the Baja bugs and excluding the, the extreme light show, if we celebrate Christmas as Jesus being the reason for the season, then we're branded by the world, by society, as some kind of a fanatic. But Christmas is supposed to be a, a time of peace on earth, goodwill towards men. So where, where did we go wrong? Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14 says this. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today a Savior, who is Messiah the Lord, was born to you in the city of David, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in cloth and lying in a feeding trap. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. I mean, wouldn't it be great if we could really put this into practice? Peace on earth, goodwill toward men? I mean, think of all the possibilities if we live life with that in mind. We could live not being afraid of anything. We can remember to praise God for, for everything and anything. But the reality of the world is that's not possible because we live in a sin-filled world. But that is why God sent his son Jesus as a baby. And so as we celebrate Christmas, we need to keep this thought in our mind. Maybe, just maybe, it's not impossible. Maybe we could have hearts filled with love. Maybe we could really be kind to one another and not just once a year. This would be something we could do all year. Why? Well, because Jesus came. Jesus changes everything and Jesus is in the people changing business now giving and receiving is an important part of Christmas and God gave a gift to us at Christmas now if I were to ask you most of, but if I were to ask you most of you would say, that gift was God's only begotten Son. And of course, you're right. Or you might say, He gave us evidence of His love, or He gave us the baby who grew up into Jesus Christ. 
And all of those would be right. But the reality of Christmas is Jesus gave us several gifts. The first gift he gave us was the forgiveness of our sins. You see, we can never have peace with our fellow human beings until we're at peace with ourselves. And we can never really be at peace with ourselves until we are at peace with God. And we can never be at peace with God unless our sins are forgiven. God has given us a recipe for life. He says, you want peace? Here is the recipe for peace. Finding forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Living according to my rules and my principles. And all of those ingredients together makes it possible. But if you leave out some of his ingredients... Or if you stick other ingredients and mix it in with God's word, then what happens? Life can blow up in your face. You know, that's, that's why there's so much depression and so much suicide and so much rejection. Because too many people are following the wrong recipes for life. The second valuable thing that God gives us is a God and a Savior that, it, uh, that identifies with us in our pre present situations. Think about the shepherd sitting out on a hillside at night watching sheep all night long. They were poor. They didn't have much prospect for improving their lives. Their grandfather was probably a shepherd. Their father was a shepherd. And now they're a shepherd. And their kids would be shepherds. Sitting out on a cold night. Watching sheep. You don't see any TV shows out there. Oh, look. Here's the Scottish sheep. We're watching them because sheep are, are boring, dirty, noisy. It wasn't a good life. And then one glorious night, the angel appeared and he made this statement, this announcement. Today, a savior who is Messiah the Lord, was born for you in the city of David. And suddenly everything changed. God became real to them. God had come to help them, to be their Savior, bringing goodwill, peace on earth. The shepherds were the outcasts of that society. But at the other end of the scale was the wise men, the magi, they were people with, with power and wealth and authority. But there was emptiness in their lives as well. So when they saw that star, they began their journey because they were looking for something too. And whether one is rich or poor, whether one is powerful or weak, whoever they may be, they need help. And God has promised that when the Christ child enters into our hearts, enters into our lives, we will receive his help. And when we're helped by the Holy Spirit of God, then we develop more sympathetic feelings towards others. You know, Christmas time, we are more sensitive towards others. 
I mean, we don't go around at Easter time bringing Easter candies to, to shut-ins and singing Easter songs, do we? But we do at Christmas time. We're reaching into our pockets for money to help others. We're delivering food to someone who's hungry. Because Christmas reminds us that God has reached down into our world and touched us from the lowest to the highest. You know, maybe we have more good inside of us than we give ourselves credit for. Maybe we spend too much time beating ourselves over the head, telling ourselves how bad we are or how bad we have it. Because Luke writes, today, a Savior who is Messiah the Lord, was born for you in the city of David. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in cloth and lying in a feeding trap. A Savior was born for you, for me, for the shepherds, for all people, we should be in awe of the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Because he has visited our earth to be with us, to cry with us, to rejoice with us, to help us over the hurts and the bumps of life. And when you realize that, you know that goodwill toward men, peace on earth, can become reality. And the other gift that God gives us at Christmas is God gave us hope for the future. See, Jesus gives us, gives us hope for the future. You know what kept the shepherds going? It was hope. God made a promise to their people. He would one day send a Messiah. And when the Messiah, the anointed one of God, came, everything would be all right again. And so that hope burned and lived on in the people of Israel. The wise men knew hope. That's what kept them going. At night, they would go out and they'd look up into the heavens and they'd search the heavens and wonder about God. Then they saw the star of promise. And they knew that when they saw it, they must follow it wherever it led them. Because it was a sign from God. And it promised the birth of a king. So hope kept them going. Christmas is all about God giving hope to us. You know, too many people think that peace on earth, goodwill toward men, is nothing but an impossible dream. Now we do know that Jesus said there would always be wars and rumors of wars. And that we would always have the poor among us. And that there would be hunger until Jesus came a second time to make things right. And there are still uncertain things to come. We will always have to deal with terror and crime and violence that we see every day. But there is one thing that will keep us going. One day, heaven is going to open again. And God is going to come back. And the message that the angel brought in Luke, verse 14, 
Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. For all of eternity from the gift that he gave at Christmas. This is what God has done for us, done for us through Jesus Christ. We don't have to die for our sins. Jesus took our place. Yes, you can enter the heavenly home. Why? Because I am going to prepare a place for you. Christmas made the difference. God wrapped up a gift and gave it to the world in the form of a little baby. But it just wasn't any baby. It was a baby who grew up. And for those who accept him as Lord and Savior will receive forgiveness of sins. And now God and that baby, all grown up, stand back. And they see what people will do with that gift. Will they receive it with joy? Or will they treat, will they reject it with indifference and rejection? God waits to see. Because what we do with the gift is also what we do with him. If we accept the gift, then we receive him and his forgiveness and his hope. But if we reject it, then we also reject the gift. We reject God and we reject Jesus. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. The last part of that verse applies to all people that God is pleased with. And if God is pleased with you, then you will be favored. And if you want to be favored by God, if you want to be someone that God is pleased with, then you need to accept his son. You need to do the things that God tells us to do. It is the greatest gift offered to us. And we can only become favored or pleased because of what Jesus has done for us. And God will wait to see what you do with this gift. And if you've not made that gift, Jesus, part of your life, then this morning is the perfect opportunity to do that. Because God's gift to us at Christmas is the gift that changes everything for the world and for us. Amen.